The Western Cape government has commissioned the CSIR to develop an investment framework that will inform decisions on where and how to invest in the region's ecological infrastructure. Healthy and robust ecological infrastructure is an essential part of being resilient, especially in the face of climate change impacts which are anticipated for the Western Cape. We get goods and services from nature all the time, for free, but only if the system is actually healthy and functioning. If it's disrupted or damaged, we don't get those services. They make sure that when it rains in a big storm, that we retain the water in our wetlands so that we don't flood as easily. The sand dunes protect our coastal developments from storm surges. Everything, including even our food security, with insects pollinating our food crops, making sure that we actually get those services and all of that nature does for us as part of the system. What we need to do is protect that functioning system and that's essentially what we refer to as ecological infrastructure. So what we've engaged with is an ecological infrastructure investment framework and what that means is where do we need to invest to make sure that our systems can be as resilient as possible and get the biggest bang for our buck. The investment framework is structured around four investment objectives. So for each one of the objectives in the report, we explain them in more detail for the reader. Uh, we also identified some strategic actions to address them, and we identified those with the CSR project team, but also with a range of stakeholders. Um, we also identified some spatial priorities of where we propose that investment should focus related to each one of the investment objectives. The first one is about water security. It relates to the clearing of alien invasive species to assist in uh, ensuring water security in the province. So the Western Cape water supply system services Cape Town and most of the surrounding cities and towns. Um, really, one of the things that we've picked up is that the alien vegetation in those catchments. CSR did some research for us and we found that we're losing approximately a dam's worth of water, about 38 million cubic meters a year, to alien vegetation. So if we were able to clear that out of the catchment, it would actually give us the equivalent of building a new dam. So one aspect of what we're looking at with part of our framework is actually looking at an alien invasive species strategy to try and make sure that we are removing things from the water catchments, from the right catchments, we're doing what we need to do, where we need to do, and we're actually informing our partners as well about how they can contribute into this whole process. What we wanted to be able to understand was how managing ecological infrastructure could improve water security for towns. This map then shows for each one of the six catchment clusters, which are the top priority catchments as outlined in red. And what it's showing is in this catchment over here, which is the Berg River and the West Coast, it is showing that up around Fuller and Play there are towns which have dependence on groundwater and their water security is low. And so we need to do an investigation to see if managing ecological infrastructure can improve their water supply, specifically clearing alien plants. And then the same applies to the other catchments that are highlighted in red. And you'll note also down here in the Nisen area where there are a lot of water issues at the moment. The second investment objective relates to managing uncontrolled fires and this primarily also relates to the management of alien invasive species to decrease the fuel load so we can easier manage uncontrolled fires and reduce the threat to people uh, and property and livelihoods as well. So what this map shows is where towns are at risk because of high fuel loads in the environment. We looked at towns, we looked at what is the fuel load based on the land cover in the area surrounding a town, just outside the boundary of the town. And what that shows us is that Paul and Wellington have a fire problem. This area has a fire problem. This area has a fire problem. In fact, that's a large part of that is the area that burnt in the nice and fire. The third one relates to addressing rangeland degradation, particularly as a result of overgrazing. And this is to enhance our food security going into the future. But what it's showing us is in the upper end of the Ulipons Doran catchment in this Karoo area, there's a big problem of land degradation, which is long, long history of overgrazing, which has resulted in the soil being mobilized and erosion. And also here, right across the little Karoo. 
The fourth one relates to flooding, both inland and coastal flooding. So potentially in the future, with an increase in rainfall, the threat of flooding also increases as a result of climate change. Areas of the coast that are low-lying or where there's a potential for flooding or the coast is sandy, those areas have been identified in the map here as priorities. This map is also based on the CSR's Green Book study. And what this map is showing us is where there are areas of towns that are, are encroaching on river floodplains and where those towns will be vulnerable to floods in the future. So we looked at where the areas are low lying, we looked at how the rainfall is likely, rainfall intensity is likely to increase with climate change and we looked at the characteristics of the catchments. We're going to launch the framework in 2020 and together with our key stakeholders, we'll actually engage in how we plan moving forward. Anything that gives, moves us closer towards climate change resilience and water security, as well as food security, whilst providing jobs, it's a win-win for everyone.